So Prabhupada always used to say, don't think about how you can see Krishna. Think about how you can get Krishna to come and see you. Get the point? Yeah. Do something so nice that Krishna will want to come and see you. That's pure devotional service. Then he will give his mercy. So the next section is titled Association with Pure Devotees. Although many different processes for developing love of Godhead have been explained so far, Srila Rupa Goswami now gives us a general description of how one can best achieve such a high position. Okay, here we go. The beginning of ecstatic love is basically faith. There are many societies and associations of pure devotees, and if someone with just a little faith begins to associate with such societies, his advancement to pure devotional service is rapid. The influence of a pure devotee is such that if someone comes to associate with him with a little faith, one gets the chance of hearing about the Lord from authoritative scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus, by the mercy of the Lord who is situated in everyone's heart, one gradually develops his faith in the descriptions of such authoritative scriptures. This is the first stage of association with pure devotees. Adao Shraddha Sadhu Sangho. And then what? In the second stage, after one becomes a little advanced and mature, he automatically offers to follow the principles of devotional service under the guidance of the pure devotee and accepts him as the spiritual master. This is called bhajana kriya. Bhajan means worship and kriya means to do. In the next stage, under the guidance of spiritual master, the devotee executes regulative devotional service and as a result of such activities, he becomes freed from all unwanted occupations. And what's that one? Anartha nivriti. Huh? All the unwanted things go away. When he is freed from unwanted occupations, his faith becomes steadily fixed. Nishta. And he develops transcendental taste for devotional service. Ruchi. Then attachment. Asakti. Asakti. Attachment. And then ecstasy. Bhava. Bhava. And in the last stage, there is pure love of Godhead. Prema. Right? These are the different stages of the development of pure love. Only the most fortunate persons can achieve such success in life. Those who are simply academic students of the Vedic scriptures cannot appreciate how such a development takes place. In the Narada Pancharatra, Lord Shiva therefore tells Parvati, My dear Supreme Goddess, you may know from me that any person who has developed the ecstasy of love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead and who is always merged in transcendental bliss on account of this love cannot even perceive the material distress or happiness coming from the body or mind. Huh? It's completely insignificant. Insignificant. Huh? In material consciousness, everybody is like totally fixated on the pleasure and pain coming from the material body. Huh? They're completely uh, extroverted through the senses, completely attached and completely serving the senses and the mind. But when someone attains pure devotional service, they can't even feel this anymore. It's like body what, I, remember, I used to have a body, didn't I, somewhere? Well, oh well. <laughs> remember the other day when we went into a trance after Vishnu Sahasranam? 
It was like I couldn't get back in my body. It was like body, <laughs> you know. You know, little kids, they like to take off their clothes. Have you ever seen this? Little kids that really don't like to wear clothes. So as every opportunity they get, you'll see there's a trail of clothes going across the floor. You just follow it, and you'll find where the kids are. <laughs> The soul does not like to be encumbered by this material shell. It's nothing but trouble, nothing but suffering, nothing but pain. Huh? Every moment there's some discomfort, there's some disturbance, some anxieties, uh, some suffering going on. That's the mind and body. So why don't we just let it go? Well, because we, don't, we think we don't have anything else. Huh? We've been so conditioned, we've become so ignorant, we don't even understand that we're a spirit soul. And the proof of that is the fact that we are conscious. So our consciousness is a spiritual experience which is going on at every moment. And all we have to do is tune into that, and that's the first stage of self-realization. Brahma Bhuta. Huh? I keep telling you this, I keep telling, I keep telling. Somebody, one of these days, is going to get it, and they're going to start dancing, and then we'll see. Only the most fortunate people. Okay. The affection and the dealings of love that are different branches of the original tree of love precede many varieties of affectionate manifestations that will not be discussed here. Oh, darn Well, they'll be discussed later on. These different manifestations have been described by Sanatana Goswami in his Bhagavatamrita. Ah, that's where they're described. Actually, it's true. Yeah, all these different things are described in Bhagavatamrita. But this is for very advanced students of the esoteric teaching. Uh, without reading Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's no way you can understand Bhagavatamrita. Without the knowledge of the rasa science given in Nectar of Devotion, you can't understand Bhagavatamrita. It will just seem like another nice story, uh, but it won't really, you won't really be able to get the full benefit from it. So all these things come first, and then you can read the literatures of the Goswamis, and get something out of it. Otherwise, you misunderstand. Although the subject of such affections and dealings of love is very confidential, Sanatana Goswami has described them very explicitly. Srila Rupa Goswami thus concludes the first division of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu offering up his treatise for the transcendental pleasure of Sanatana Goswami, who has established the transcendental beauty, and of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. It appears from this statement that the great Srila Jiva Goswami was not yet active when Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu was written. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta summary study of the first division of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu up to the descriptions of ecstatic love of Godhead, which are to follow next. So, is anybody dizzy? Yeah. <laughs> We're high up there. Hi, hi, hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nectar of devotion is very high. It's very, very high because the only subject really in nectar of devotion is transcendental love. And transcendental love is very high. It's very pure. But this is the normal condition of the soul. Try to understand. Right now, we're in an abnormal condition. We're in a diseased condition. We're in a fallen condition, a contaminated condition. Insane, actually. Huh? That's material life. But our real normal condition is spiritual life. 
And in spiritual life, we have an eternal identity, a spiritual body, and an eternal service relationship with the Lord. So now, how do we go from material consciousness and material life to spiritual life, spiritual consciousness, spiritual identity? Well, the beginning of that path is already given uh, and summarized by Rupa Goswami in the Adao Shraddha Shloka. So we've all we've discussed this many times. Uh, Adao Shraddha Sadhu Sango. Uh, tata Bhajana Kriya. So first you have a little bit of faith. We don't ask for total faith. Huh? Many religious groups ask you for total faith. You have to believe everything.